Hi, this is the Wonder Blunder in the classical Queen C2 variation of the Nimzo Indian. It is an extraordinary variation which I first discovered almost accidentally as it was first listed as a novice level trap but recent analysis has shown it has an unbelievably cryptic side to it. So after d4, knight f6, c4 and e6 White plays knight c3 and hoping to get e4. So black goes for the Nimzo Indian. Bishop to b4, pinning the knight and inhibiting the e4 pawn advance. Here white goes for the classical variation queen c2, renewing the e4 pawn advance threat. Uncommon but sound is the immediate trading by black of the knight on c3. Bishop takes c3 and in order to keep the pawns intact, white recaptures with the queen. The knight can jump to e4 hitting the queen and the queen retreats to c2 now hitting the knight. Black here can try f5 keeping the knight solidly on the important square e4. Well, this position appears 65 times in my database with several GMs at the helm, so it cannot all be bad. But none of the 65 games continued with the knight knocking apparent blunder F3, because this looks blatantly evident that after the obvious queen to H4, white is busted after G3, and at knight takes g3. But interestingly enough, while going over this variation, before this recording, some serious doubts began to arise, and my chess engines, which at first had evaluated the position solidly in black's favour, began to have second thoughts the deeper the variation was examined. So after h takes g3, it looks as if black is basically winning after queen takes h1. But let's have a look what can happen. After knight h3, the queen is sort of hemmed in and is the queen going to manage to get out safely? Well, black can try knight c6. We'll have a look at another variation afterwards. And attacking the pawn on d4, white actually can ignore that pawn and king f2 is best. And after queen h2 check, Bishop g2, if the knight captures the pawn hitting the queen, queen d3, e5 defending the knight, bishop e3, and now that threat is not bishop taking the knight on d4, but rather the old switcheroo, that rook is moving over to h1, going to be hitting the queen. And after a move like f4, after g takes f4, it's obviously here white who's doing better. After knight h3, we're backing up now and going to the beginning of this variation. After knight h3 and knight c6, black can try an immediate queen h2 instead of knight c6. A bishop then is going to jump to f4, guarding the pawn on g3, which was being hit. Now knight c6, rook d1 guarding the pawn on d4, white also could have ignored that pawn on d4, even played bishop takes c7. But now after d6, g4 is going to hit the queen out with the bishop on f4. So queen h1, king f2, and we've got the threat now of bishop g2 and hitting the queen twice. After f takes on g4, white does not recapture, rather bishop g2 now, and that queen is gone. So after queen takes on d1, queen takes on d1, we've basically got an equal position, and the initial assessment that black was winning is definitely wrong. So this has been the wonder blunder,
in the classical Queen C2 variation of the Nimzo Indian, I think it might be upgraded from a novice level trap to an advanced level trap. Hope you found it interesting. Thank you. Bye-bye.